Hey everybody, I'm CC Trubiak, and welcome back to CC's Vinyl Closet. If this is your first time here, I welcome you to my humble abode. Here at CC's Vinyl Closet, I just love geeking out and listening to a lot of old country music on vinyl records, and then sharing whatever I can of that gospel with you guys. And if this sounds like your kind of thing, I encourage you to stick around because today I have a real special installment for you. I discovered a pioneering lady by the name of Jean Shepard. You down? Let's go. Full disclosure, I'd never really even heard or listened to Gene Shepard before, but in the recent years as I've been looking back on a lot of early country music history, her name has frequently come up more and more often. Not just in passing either, she's been called a legend in the music industry because she was a pioneer who accomplished a lot of firsts. So anyways, I sought out one of her records and recently carved out some time not only to listen to this record, but also to do some therapeutic homework of geeking out and learning whatever I could to honor this pioneering lady. So here we go. Jean Shepard, rest in peace, was born Ollie Imogen Shepard in 1933 and passed away at the age of 82 in 2016. She was one of 10 children all of whom were musically inclined. So as the story would go, music was such an important part of her early life that she came up with the idea at the age of just 14 years old to form an all-girl Western swing band that was called the Melody Ranch Girls. Jean sang and played string bass, and it wouldn't take long before this group would get some recognition, playing for dances and making radio appearances. This was all circa 1948. Country singer-songwriter Hank Thompson discovered Shepard just a few years later, and with Thompson's help, bless you, Hank, I'm going to deep dive you someday soon. That's a promise. With his help, Shepard signed with Capitol Records in 1952. She found success in 1953 with a duet that she did with Ferlin Husky. Boy, I love that name. I'm coming for you too, Ferlin. This duet was called A Dear John Letter. Better yet, in 1955, Jean recorded her debut studio album called Songs of a Love Affair, which brings me right here to my copy of Jean Shepard, Songs of a Love Affair. Ta-da! I've spent a good amount of time taking in all of the tracks and in between reading about the ways in which Jean Shepard and this particular album are notable. And here is what I now can appreciate. Gene Shepard, Songs of a Love Affair, was produced by Ken Nelson and released on Capitol Records in 1956. This album is said to be one of country music's first concept albums in history, and also one of the first released by a female country artist. Wait, did I say a concept album? You bet. This album itself got its name, Songs of a Love Affair, from the song's themes, all of which depict a marriage that was ended by a love affair. There's even a pretty little black and white illustration on the back that's kind of charming, romantic, and old school with some liner notes that say, the inspiration for Songs of a Love Affair was Joe Allison's tender ballad, Hello, Old Broken Heart. When Jean Shepard heard the song, it suggested to her an album dealing with the moods and experiences of a young girl in love. So Jean got busy collecting the rest of the special songs she needed to tell the story. No performer in the field of country music is better suited to interpret the many moods of a young girl in love than pretty Jean Shepard, a Hank Thompson discovery and a permanent member of the Grand Old Opry. Capitol Records' charming Miss Shepard is known best for the sweet quality of her voice and her meaningful phrasing of every word in a song. Now, I did find all of this interesting in my own curious way. So needless to say, I got on board with Jean Shepard, this brand new voice for me, because, you know, this girl promised me stories about the doubts and hopes, the joys and fears of a girl too eager to give her heart. Hey, I'm all ears, Jean. What's up? I should first comment on her instrument, that voice. 
It's difficult not to want to make comparisons to other female country artists, but I'm going to refrain from that because I love all of the things that make any artist's voice authentic and stand out. And Jean's voice stands out to me for its styling. It's a very honky-tonk style and therefore unique and separate from, say, the Nashville sound styling or torch singer styling and so on. If sassy is the word, Jean is it throughout all of the songs on this record. This feels like the perfect segue into the first song that I'd like to note. Girls in Disgrace is a song on side one, the side that really emphasizes the theme of breaking up. And in this song, a very strong but dignified Jean responds to the man, basically the player, who strung her along, used and disgraced her. And we know how small, small towns can feel for a girl. Now imagine this in the 50s. Gee whiz. Anyways, I like the song for Jean's strength of conviction with her wise words after being basically properly used by a cad, a fool. So here's a bit of Girls in Disgrace. So faithfully you promised me we'd marry in the spring. A year has passed, and now at last, I see through everything. Just like a fool, I let you rule this heart inside of me. Now you don't care how many years I'll spend in misery. Girls in disgrace must surely face the gossips of the town. And every time she's passing by, they greet her with a frown. You constantly reveal to me that you could never be. The kind of man to understand girls in disgrace like me. Tell Me What I Want to Hear on side two is also another rather sweet but simple honky-tonk standard song. You know the kinds, and personally I really love these kinds of melodies. So here's a little bit of Tell Me What I Want to Hear. Darling, please don't make me wonder Give my heart no cause to fear Say you know our love's eternal Tell me what I want to hear Say you'll feel the same old magic that I feel when you are near. Whisper love words and sing me love songs. Tell me what I want to hear. There truly are a lot more songs just like this on Songs of a Love Affair, the ones that nicely fit in that wheelhouse of other great honky-tonk artists of that era. Now get this, this record came out in 1956. This was just one year before Jean was invited to join the Grand Old Opry in 1955. This was a time when the only other female cast members were comedian Minnie Pearl, piano player Del Wood, and our new friend, the superstar Kitty Wells. I enjoy Jean's Spitfire personality, and the song, Did I Turn Down a Better Deal, is that kind of song with that fiery personality. Oh, when I met you long ago, there were things I didn't know. But how was I to know how I would feel when you it made me see I had it tough It makes me wonder did I turn down a better deal If I had another chance to think it over I'm sure I'd find someone with more appeal There were things 
irony crave Nice things you never gave It makes me wonder Did I turn down a better deal? Beyond listening to songs of a love affair, all of which I do recommend, I'm still not entirely familiar with her work, but I did thoroughly enjoy this monumental record for its pioneering originality, because I do love a good concept album. I did read that after this record, and being invited to join the Grand Old Opry, she fell in love with singer Hawkshaw Hawkins and got married, and she was only eight months pregnant with her second son, when Hawkshaw perished in that 1963 plane crash that also took the lives of Patsy Cline, Cowboy Copas. You remember the one, I talked about it in Patsy's story. That had to be so difficult for Jean, but I've read that at the time that it happened, friends like Minnie Pearl and Jan Howard rushed to her side and she triumphed as many of the greats do. And she became very known for her blunt outspokenness in several ways that I've grown to appreciate. So here are two final interesting tidbits about Jean. Apparently when her friend Skeeter Davis, who I'm gonna get to one of these days, when Skeeter was suspended from the Opry for supporting quote unquote Jesus freak hippies in the 1960s, Jean went to bat for her with the show's management. I like that and I'm not gonna lie. I've also read that her no-nonsense style also frequently ruffled feathers in Nashville. I mean, heaven forbid. No tea and no shade, but history has receipts showing that when my country pop angel, Olivia Newton-John, won the Country Music Association Award for Best Female Singer in 1974, Jean, yes, Jean, was one of the infamous people that I've read about who got up in arms in protest, championing the back to country movement. History now knows how all of that ended up, but much of it even led to her record company dropping her. OMG, it's OMJ indeed. I jest, I'm positive that eventually Jean, like a lot of the other purest of traditionalists, had to have mellowed out, pun intended, about that sort of thing eventually. I mean, after all, in my opinion, there's room for everyone in country music. I mean, that's why God invented subgenres. A total side note after reading about Jean's involvement with the ACE, I looked to see if she'd even released anything around 1974 that put her in competition with Olivia. And wouldn't you know it, Jean had an album called I'll Do Anything It Takes and and she literally does a cover of Olivia Newton-John's 1973 hit, Let Me Be There. What the heck? That sounds kind of fishy to me, to use an ONJ song, but then protest her too? Hashtag, I'll do anything it takes. I'm just saying, Jean. Fishy. So there are a few of my thoughts after discovering Jean Shepherd and Songs of a Love Affair, released in 1956. Jean Shepard was a champion because facts present that she achieved significant things for women in country music because she made it on her own. Hail to the Jean Shepard gospel of it all. So now I'd love it if you dropped your comments below on your thoughts on Jean Shepard. Thank you for watching CC's Vinyl Closet and stay tuned for next week's installment. And until then, Take care of you and take sweet comfort in that music.